Hello, everybody. It's Alex from the Remote Work Live podcast, and I'm here with Dipesh Patney. Dipesh Patney is somebody I've known for a number of years, and he's had an influence in my career. We'll talk a little bit about that in a little while, but Dipesh is the founder um, of Gravitas Q, having spent many years in digital marketing for top for a top agency called PhD. He's now a, a digital marketing consultant. Um, he's gone from actually managing a team of, of 70, I believe it is, to now setting up his own consultancy, which deals with helping digital marketing, digital marketing agencies as well as um, client side work as well. And I'm going to get Dipesh to talk a little bit more about that in a little while. But Dipesh is also um, a partner uh, with help for addiction. So this is something that as well might interest you as well. And I think this particular podcast will interest you if you, there's a couple of things actually. Um, if you've, if you've transferred from, if you've transferred or want to transfer from a digital marketing scenario, co-located scenario to a remote scenario, as well as that, if you are struggling as well with working from home, being isolated. So those are two areas that we're going to cover in today's show. So I just want to really say thank you, Dipesh, to you for, for joining us today. Thank you so much. No, no problem at all. Uh, hey, Alex, uh, thanks for having me on as well. Uh, appreciate taking, taking the time. No problem, no problem. What I want to find out, or what I want you to tell the audience first and foremost, Dipesh, we want a bit of a backstory about you. How did you come to be... Oh, yeah becoming a consultant, working from home, having, you know, um, built your way up through mainly SEO, digital marketing. Just tell us your backstory. Yeah, yeah sure, sure. So, so actually, like, um, so I think a large proportion of my career was working at PhD, and, you know, that was approximately nine years. Um, before, before I actually went into that, I was, I was in sales. And, um, and I actually enjoyed being in sales. Um, it was it, it was exciting. Sales was exciting, and I loved you know going into the sale and closing deals down and stuff. But then I kind of got to a point where I was like, well, I've got all these IT skills. I love the whole market, marketing aspect of things. So I want to be a um, so I want to find my put myself in a position where I'm a full on expert or something and not just in sales. Um, and that kind of led me down a path which actually initially didn't work out really well because I was trying to get um, an SEO job. I'd heard of SEO from university um, and things like that. And do you know what? Nobody, nobody would hire me for an SEO job. <laughs> so, um, yeah, with no experience, you know, it's that whole uh, chicken and egg thing. You don't have any experience, so we don't think that, you know, you're the right person for the job. Okay, fine, great. So... What I ended up doing was learning SEO from searching on Google. And uh, that led me on to setting up my own, you know, small SEO outfit. Um, anyways, I don't want to spend too much time on that because, to be honest, it was a terror. It worked out terribly. I took on a few clients. I was having problems getting money from clients and things like that. SEO was in the very early days then. And a lot of people still weren't like, you know, it, it wasn't it wasn't a, a thing to do yet on the internet. So um, what happened was that kind of I did do some freelancing projects and PhD needed a freelancer, and I went I initially went to interview as a freelancer, but they offered me a full time role and said it's not a freelance position now it's a full time role. Are you interested? You want to get to work on clients like Sainsbury's and uh, back then Cadbury's um, and things like that. And I was like, wow, true. Yeah, so I joined PhD on that basis. Um, absolutely frightened on my first day because I, you know, I, I went into a job where obviously I demonstrated some SEO abilities, but I only knew my SEO abilities on a smaller client or, you know, somebody that can self taught themselves from home. Um, thinking that, okay, there's going to be people there that are going to know way more than me. I get there and actually, um, you know, the levels are pretty similar, the skill sets are pretty similar. Um, and if anything, I had a slight advantage because I had I thought that SEOs should know how to build websites back then, if you're going to work in a big agency or something like that. 
Uh, and it turns out most SEOs didn't know how to build a website or code or things like that. And, and I did, because I taught myself that at home, thinking that's what an SEO should know. Um, so, you know, cut long story short, I had a very, very good career at PhD, and PhD still remains uh, really close to my heart as a business. You know, I've, been, I've always wanted to see them going up and, and never down because, um, you know, they made me in many ways. Whilst I did a great job there and I, you know, got a lot of value, um, recognition, I got lots of exposure to building my network, to, you know, speaking publicly and things like that. Um, you know, they did a lot for me as much as, you know, I put the hard work in. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, it's definitely, you know, a PhD is one of the highlights of my life uh, at the time I spent there because I went from, you know, a very junior SEO to becoming head of SEO, running the team, rebuilding the team, you know, taking that taking that team into, you know, a very high level of um, revenue from where it started. How big was your team? You know, I, so when I... When I first got there, there was only actually uh, two of us, or three of us. There was only three of us, and we didn't even have a head of SEO. Um, a head of SEO and things like that came afterwards. And so that initial team I was working in as a junior member was only a team of five. Um, yeah, a team of five. Uh, I think by the, time, by the time we were done, we were a team of ten. Uh, I mean, by the time, as in, um, by the time when I became head of SEO, we were still a team of five. We kind of, I kind of doubled that to a team of 10 um, until I was offered the job to then um, manage uh, manage uh, the performance digital channels. Right. So the performance digital channels included affiliates, uh, paid search, social media, mm-hmm. um, and the newly developed content, um, the newly developed content team, which we had just started building. Um, so I spent I spent two years running that team and kind of you know that team significantly grew and you know to be honest I can't take the credit for all of the growth because it was it was a joint effort um, team effort page, yeah because we yeah massively because we um, firstly I recognised that we had lots of resource problems initially um, so I did so I went and spoke to some of the you know the heads the CEOs that look if we're going to build the best team then we need X, Y, and Z. And, and to their credit, they signed off X, Y, and Z and said, yeah, let's do it then. Um, so, you know, that led to growth. Um, and at the same time, we were winning lots of big business, um, which PhD still got and then won more afterwards. So, you know, I imagine that team is bigger now. And um, but, you know, running that team was, it, it was absolutely spectacular. I loved it. It was, the first year was the hardest year I've ever had in my whole career life. In, in my whole career because um, it was stressful. Put it that way, it was stressful. <laughs> well, I suppose when you're... Um, I, I had a similar kind of scenario to you because when I... Actually, Dipesh helped me out. Let me, let me tell you a bit of my story about how I met Dipesh because there was a time when I was making a transition uh, into SEO as well. I also went the self-taught route as, as Dipesh did. You know, I, I built websites myself and... Um, dabbled with different WordPress blogs to, to experiment with how I could boost boost traffic organically. Um, but I came to Dipesh because I was at a time where I was reaching out to my network and Dipesh was on my network. And I asked Dipesh, um, you know, what, what his thoughts were on, on agency as opposed to working client side. And Dipesh gave me so much advice, which, has, which really steered my career um, along a course of um, SEO and the way he gave advice and I think everybody needs somebody like Depeche in a network the way he gave the, um, advice it was totally impartial he didn't sort of um, have any bias one way or another and he gave advice in such a way that was he was well for one he was very busy but and so he was very kind and very you know very good generous with his time but two he had so much in terms of his own experience to, to give and to share. He was a, he's a very much a sharing person. So Dipesh, oh, yeah, yeah. this, I wanted to say, because I mean, this is the first time I've met Dipesh actually, face to face. I just wanted to say thank you to, for you oh, for, for that. <laughs> no, that's okay, mate. Anytime, you know, you know I'm here. Um, I think it's important to help people out in their career anyway, because, you know, like we're talking now, you do podcasts and I'm on your podcast. I probably wouldn't be on your podcast you know, had we not had conversations in the past, right? True. So, 
you know, everything goes around in circles. And, and the other thing is there are lots of kids and stuff out there who are just starting their careers. Um, or there's people who want a career switch, right? And, and they, they, need, they need somebody to go to that is impartial and will offer them good advice. Um, and I never had that uh, when I was starting my career. So, you know, and I wish I did. And to be honest, credit to you because you had the initiative to say, oh, look, I've got this guy to pay. She's on my network. He, he's the head of SEO. Let, let me reach out to him. I, you know, I wasn't as forthcoming as that when I was younger. And when I was, you know, looking at career changes and stuff. And I wish I was more open and honest back then. Um, but it's because I kind of believe that I just got to get on with it. I got to do it myself. That's not how it works. You know, you've got to tap into your network. You know, people do help you out and you help them out. And that's how, I think that's the best way to do business and that's the way you enjoy it the most. Um, I agree. I agree. Yeah. And I'm intrigued actually, Dipesh, because you've gone from, being really successful with PhD, um, you built up a good relationship with every with you know with the people there. You've had a good a good stint there. You've had nine years there. You built up a team. How how big was your team? Did you say seventy? Yeah, when you left? it was about seventy by the time I left. So so you've built all that up now. Why, why switch, right? Yeah. How what yeah. made you want to switch to working at you know, yourself? This is, this is the hardest decision I ever made in my life. Um, and even when I decided that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set up on my own, I wasn't totally convinced in my own head. And even my wife was like, look, like, if you're going to do this, you do it now. All right. So, um, so why I switched? Okay. I, I loved everything about my job and stuff, but there was always that something at the back of my head telling me that, you know, I still want to set up on my own. I still want to set up on my own. And it, 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 I had attempted it before and failed. And that had never left me because I tried to set up a uh, SEO um, business and I failed. That part had never left me. It was always still there that, you know, I tried to do that and it didn't work out. And so I said, you know what, I'm going to give it a go again. And the other big reason for it was my life had changed. I had a daughter. Right. My daughter was, yeah, my daughter was approaching one. Um, I actually, yeah, so the month that she ter- was going to turn one in is the month I basically, I think that's the month I resigned or left. Because that first year of her life, what was happening was, by the time I got home, she was always in bed. Oh, uh, I know that feeling. Of, of, yeah. yeah. Not a good feeling, is it? When you get, get back home and she's asleep or they're asleep. So I, I hear yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Um and, and so that's what was uh, that's what was actually really like um, it started to, it was starting to affect me because I was like I'm not even getting to see my daughter grow up so I said something has to change um, and the time just presented itself where actually all right let's set up I, I just decided that I'm going to set up a man um, at that point because I said that that way initially I can work from home I'll be able to watch my daughter grow up okay I might I might not make the same money I I did. Um, and, you know, it's going to be tough, and I'm going to have to build the business up and things like that, but at least I'm not going to miss out or regret uh, the decision of, um, of, of uh, you know, of spending time with my daughter, and, you know, I won't have those regrets when I grow, you know, when I'm old or when I'm, like, looking back and, they're tw- and she's 20 years old or something, and I don't want to feel like, man, why didn't I spend more time with her as a baby? And you can, uh, you can never get that time back, can you? No, you can't because I think the older kids get, the less time they want to spend with their parents yeah. <laughs> until they hit about 30 or 40 and then they kind of gravitate, um, <laughs> gravitate back to their parents. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah so um, it's, it's really weird like that. Um, so I, I just didn't want to miss that. So I said, okay, I'm going to make a decision. I'm going to give it a go and I'm going to see how I get on. And if it gets really bad, then I'll look at contracting. I'll look at um, other options and, and go from there. Um, so yeah, and the other thing, what, at the time when I was quitting, I didn't know what my proposition fully was, and it kind of developed because um, what I, what Gravitas Q does essentially is it's not just digital marketing. Yes, we can deliver your SEO. The SEO is usually delivered by me as well as you know the front front man for that. We deliver PPC. We do social media as well, and everything is based on performance. 
So it's about, you know, the types of clients that will come to us are people that want to drive sales, they want to do lead gen on something like Facebook, they want to do lead gen on PPC, they're doing SEO because they want more sales. Um, it's not necessarily a branding exercise. And the best way to deliver performance is have somebody that has been around and somebody that has got the experience um, and knows what is going to work and what isn't, work, isn't going to work. So the way Gravitas Q works is that I basically have built a network of a lot of freelancers, mm -hmm. people I've worked with in the past, people I've trained as well in the past, um, as well as um, as well as you know some newer people I've met along the way. Now these freelancers, they have five to ten years experience. They have more experience than you would get at a bigger agency. So if you're if you're if you're a client and you hire an agency. A lot of the time, that agency is going to have somebody that either that is a grad working in your business, that has one year's experience working in your business, or two years ex working, you know, experience working in your business. It's rare that they're going to get that person that's five to ten years working on their business because, you know, that person who's been in the game for ten years is is you know going to be managing a team of seventy eight yes. people, like myself, yes. right? So the way Gravitas Q works is that. I'm tapping into all the people that no longer want to be in that um, in that space or working for an agency and they want to contract and they like the execution side of things. They like working on clients, businesses and, you know, campaigns and stuff like that. And they're not that concerned about the management and managing people side of things. So those are the people I've now tapped into because I'm bringing a lot of experience to the table for a client. Um, that they necessarily are not going to, they're not always going to get the right recommendations and the right answers from someone that only has one or two years in the business versus somebody that has five to ten years in the business. And I guess you, because I'm, you also um, built up your networks. You've got a, a great network yourself of not only people who you've worked with on other projects while you've been at PhD, but you know through the years, you you can vet those people. Having worked with Absolutely, them, yeah. you know, you can you can actually say, you know, I could put my hat on this guy or this this, this person here because I I I've, I've seen their work, I know what they're all about, and I think that that's that as well. It's 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 really it's quite difficult, I, I believe, to find um, good people at the level that you want them because often you lots of people these days now, lots of um, business owners are getting approached by people who may only have one or two years experience in marketing and claim that they've got you know they're a marketing expert sort of thing so yeah. you know it's a huge problem that is yeah. actually because so a lot of the clients that come to me um you know because i'll be honest with you i am not the cheapest person to come to if you're a smaller business but i do have smaller business clients and the ones that have come to me um, I usually want people that have been burnt in um, in who they've hired to do their SEO and their people seen stuff. What usually happens is um, uh, a smaller business they can't then they can't afford to necessarily pay big big money for having PPC delivered for them or SEO delivered for them. Um, and there's nobody that's ever managed the expectations in SEO because SEO takes time. You know, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta say that. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do SEO for a year, six months, and I'm gonna look at the results of that period of time when you initially start. Yeah. Um, but there's no, no one ever manages the expectations. So with the smaller businesses, what happens is they get burnt, and then they either decide. SEO is no good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mate, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, this is, you know, this is the fight I'm, I'm in because that's what a lot of people will be like, SEO doesn't work anymore. And they keep seeing all these ads on Facebook about Facebook advertising. And so then they start blocking off there um, and stuff like that. But actually, to do digital well, you should be doing SEO. You should be doing some Facebook. You should be doing some PPC. You should be even looking at affiliate programs and things like that. And yeah. like, you know, all of that combined these days is what drives a business growth, drives business growth. Um, and so, yeah, they decide SEO doesn't work. They, that's one side. Then there's the very persistent ones that say, no, my mate did it and he did really well out of it. Or my competitor did it and they did really well out of it. I've clearly not got the right person in here, or I've clearly, this is how I actually became, one of the ways I became a partner in Helpful Addiction as well was we met through um, the fact that he had had a bad experience with a previous SEO company, and we kind of did a partnership where I would join and work on the website, 
and you know we would kind of monitor how that partnership work and 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 it's gone really well mm-hmm. uh, but you know this is i get a lot of people that have been burned and have convers- and i have conversations with them i can't always sign them all up because some people are um some clients will still be um a little bit hesitant yeah, and course, some clients yeah. will still they won't want to spend um the amount that i estimated it's going to take because they, they want immediate results, don't they, usually? Yeah, immediate results and low cost. And so some clients it doesn't work with, but with many clients it does. And this is where, you know, to be honest, I've been doing quite well out of the fact that um, people have been um, people have been a burnt in SEO. Not that I like that time. Yeah, of course. I know what you mean. That's the, it's just a common story that's coming to me all the time. So. It's so hard, though, yeah. to find. It's, it's hard to find um good seos and i suppose now that you've gone remote as well especially um obviously you've built your network but how is that going what are the challenges now that you face with your with your remote team yeah um, so you know there are a lot of challenges um from working remote and i think obviously this is all quite i think a lot of the country is working (laughs) remote currently due to current circumstances um, so there's going to be a lot of challenges within the workplace as well. Um, the biggest challenges I faced from going from a big agency to suddenly sitting in a room by myself um, was a few, actually. Firstly, you know, that that feeling of loneliness. I'm, I've got four walls around me. The only person that ever comes to talk to me is my little girl. <laughs> right? She'll pop in and she'll be like, Daddy, you got food? And she'll bring her fake food oh. and stuff. So yeah, and you know that was that's a highlight of my day. day. It still is. She still does it. So, um, and she'll only disturb me once or twice. So you know, it's not even it's disturbance. I'm happy for it to come in. Of course. Yeah. So you know, like that loneliness really kicked in. Um, Cabin fever became quite a big thing, and um, you know the fact that I've got nobody to bounce ideas off. I'm somebody that bounces off other people, and I always was. I'm always going to be a people person. Um, so I've had to adapt a lot to how I now operate because of the fact that it's against my brain. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, my brain has always been, I need to be around people. I need to be social. I need to be, you know, I, I, I perform best when I'm around others and I'm very good at, you know, I believe I'm very good at getting the best out of others as well. Mm-hmm. So, um, when I transitioned to this, it was suddenly I'm lonely what, what, it's, it's almost that whole Yoda effect, you know, uh, fear leads to anger, anger leads yes. to sadness yeah. and that sort of thing. So, yeah. you know, the loneliness kicks in. That loneliness leads to frustration. Your frustration then impacts your productivity. And that productivity, once you start, you know, productivity is not as good, your self-esteem or your self-worth, yeah. uh, you start questioning your self-worth. So there's knock-on effects, started, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's when I started kind of, I started asking myself, have I made the right decision here about mm-hmm. setting up on my own? And remember, I wasn't initially, I wasn't making the same money I was making when I was working yeah. for an agency because I'd, I'd worked my way up to quite a good level. So, you know, th- all of that started impacting my self worth and how I feel about myself. And, you know, what I kind of recognized from that, you know, this is it's, obviously this is a little bit difficult to talk about on yeah. a podcast. Yeah. But, um, you know, the moment you start questioning what your self-worth is, you're, you're in a little bit of trouble because um, that means you're not in the right state of mind. And what I realized that actually the whole loneliness, the cabin fever, the productivity slipping, the, um, you know, how the, how the linkage to self-worth, all of that was actually, wasn't the problem. It was the result of, it was the result of um, the bigger problem. And that was mindset. Yes, yes. You know, mindset, having the right mindset is the most important thing. And I think anybody who's working from home and struggling right now with the coronavirus stuff going on and being locked in your house, mindset is the is the most important thing that you need to have right to then deliver. I mean, you know, obviously, don't get me wrong, you can't just have a great mindset and then sit on your sofa and do nothing. Yeah, yeah, you have yeah. to have the right mindset and process as well to um do well working at home no i see and i I also see as well like a little picture in my head because i i went through this but when the more you talk about this is the more i recognize 
the, um, the symptoms that I had in myself when I when I first started working from home. Because like you said, I, I, I used to blame my productivity in terms of my, you know, why I wasn't sort of achieving the goals that I was, I didn't really look at my mindset until, you, you know, until I realized I was actually, I don't know how to describe it. Much further down, right? Yeah. Kind of like, that's almost like your last assessment. Yeah. First you, yeah, first you're like, I need to get an office. And so then yeah. you say, okay, well, you're still not making that much money, but you're thinking about getting an office. Yeah, yeah. Right? And but just so that you can make the money you need to make, right? And that was, you know, these are the thoughts that I'm going through. And then I almost like started saying, well, you know what? I'm around my wife too much and my wife and kid too much. You start to blame everybody else, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's just, you know, it's the wrong, it's completely the wrong way to look at it. And, you know, if this podcast helps someone right now, is like, take out all the excuses you're about to make and just jump straight to mindset, please, because that's where the problem is going to lie. Can I ask you something, Dipesh? What did you do? Because when, when you're in that frame of mind, right, it's almost like things are it's almost like there's like lots of pressure on top of you and you can't, I suppose some people, they may not be able to think straight. So how do you pull yourselves up by your bootstraps and think, do that self-assessment? How do you even do that? You know, do you see what I mean? Yeah. So, so that's a really good question. And one of the biggest things that I realize is that when I wake up in the morning, I need to, I need to set myself up. Right. So, um, so to do that, I did a couple of things. First of all, I put some, I like, there's, there's a couple of things that motivate me. Like there's a pic, there's a portrait that has always motivated me. So I bought that portrait and I put it in my study. So when I walk into my study, the first thing I see is that portrait. Mm-hmm. Right. And then the other thing is, is, you know what, like what happens is sometimes you almost start thinking too realistically and you can't do that. When you when you when you're working from home and you don't have people around you to reassure you or you know to give you recognition or you know um, tell you you're doing a great job, you you almost have to just step out of realism and just say that look, you know, being realistic is is, is not the is not the way that you know someone like Bill Gates did it or you know, and I'm not you know I'm not even trying to become a Bill Gates yes. or a Steve Jobs, right? But that's not the way they did it. Or, you know, Rupert Murdoch. You think that he went home to his family and, you know, told him, listen, I'm going to stick some satellites in the sky. <laughs> yeah, and we're going to get all this all this news information and we're going to do all the... Well, what do you think his family said? His family probably thought it was completely it was crazy, destroyed, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, so, uh, so, you know, you have to take those examples. And I think that's important as well. Like, motivation is important because you should be looking at quotes of what some of these top, you know... Um, top people are saying just like how you do podcasts with ceos and stuff you know the information that offer is valuable and whenever you face a dark time at home you should be referring to that stuff that is one exercise you can do is you know if you don't want to sit there and you know um meditate or something go to youtube put some motivational videos on and go see what some of these guys are saying because they will tell you some very very um important things which not all will apply to you but many things will and I, um, I think I, I think in some cases they'll say things that will set off like little. Um, actually, yeah, I've been been in that situation myself. That's what I'm going through right now. And you 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 you, mm. you, you begin to realize that it's not just you, right? Yeah, that's going through that particular thing or that particular issue. No, I, I hear that. I hear it. And yeah, and the other thing that's really good is affirmations. I don't know. Have you ever tried affirmations? Yes, yes, I do. Yeah. Yeah, what? Which ones do you suggest? Are there any particular ones that you you would use? I I, I wrote my own because um, so I've I've got about eleven, and remember what I was telling you about? I was having some challenges because I started questioning my self worth. Mm-hmm. So I basically, you know, started building affirmations, really short ones. They might be four or five um, word sentences, and I'd have about eleven of them. And in the morning, you know, I just start the day like that. And what happened was I then suddenly stopped reading them. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and what an aff- like for anybody that doesn't know, what an affirmation is is basically just a one liner you might say to link yourself um, to remind yourself of who you are um, or where you want to be. Like you might say that you know I love myself. Uh, remind yourself you love yourself. Uh, I've had a very strong career um, and I will continue to do so. Yeah, I will deliver success. 
uh, regardless of how long it takes. Like j- these are the types, you know, you have you have to have affirmations, and you might even have some of something you're already not yet. Mm-hmm. So you might say that I am a millionaire already. Do you see what I mean? So yeah. um, you have to have these affirmations because what happened to me actually, I was doing the affirmations for quite a while, and then I stopped reading them. So then I, I kind of said, so I recorded them on my phone. Okay. So now I just have to press play, right, when I sit down at my desk, and that's it. That's good enough. That's a good that's idea. Really amazing with it. That's a good yeah. idea. It's a good, that's actually a good, because what you get on, you've got quite a lot of these things on, on YouTube, but you get other people saying them. But, so, mm. but I think if, you, if you've done what Dipesh just, just suggested there in terms of writing down your affirmation and recording yourself saying it, it it's... And also the repetition as well. Like you said, you can't just sort of do it for one or two days and then have a month off and then come back to it after that. It, it's, a, it's a thing that you, that you should do, I think, um, on a daily basis, you know? Is, do you do it yeah, daily? Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I generally do it on a daily basis. There, will be day, there, are, there are days missed. And I'm going to talk about process in a minute, actually, because, okay. um, because you know, the way when I talk about process, I talk about how do you split up your day and how you operate now at home versus how you operate in office. Really, I think that's really key. Um, but yeah, affirmations I try to do every day. There are days that I missed, but I do regret that I missed that day afterwards. Yeah. Um, look, like the way I look at it is every little thing that helps. And there must be a reason why people say it helps. I tried I tried the meditation thing. It doesn't work for me. Yes. Right? I tried to do meditation. It didn't work for me. So I said, well, rather than meditation, why can't affirmations be my meditation? Yeah. Um, and that's, you know, that's why I kind of went down that path. Because at the time, a lot of my friends were talking about meditation. A lot of gurus are talking about meditation. And I was like, I can't even, like, <laughs> sit there and, like, you know, I basically get ants in my pants when I want my eyes closed. <laughs> I am in, I am trouble sleeping. Like it takes me ages to fall asleep, and you want me to sit there and, and meditate? I can't. I can't. I it's can't. not a one size fits all, is it? It's not. It's not a one yeah, size fits no, all. It's not at all. You have to figure out what what works for you, and I'm the same. Meditation. Um, I, I mean, I've, I've tried meditation my, myself, um, and I, I yeah, I think I prefer to just get myself in a zone by. List, either listening to a certain music or um, reading about a certain somebody who I, I really sort of respect, or af, you know affirmations or a combination of those things, and those are the things that really sort of motivate me and sort of get me in the right frame of mind for the day going yeah. forward. You know, see you you have a unique you have a unique method which actually is built around what you like. Yeah, um, yeah. So you know, meditation might not work for you. Affirmations might not work for you. The method that you're using, Alex, might not work for someone else, right? Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's very good that you've built one that is specifically geared towards you. And every people, that's what people need to do. They can't just say, oh, I'm going to meditate like, you know, uh, Bill Gates does or, you know, whoever else um, or, you know, Richard Branson. Or I'm not going to do it that way. You have to find your own way of doing things. Um, and, you know, I'll tell you a really good story about that. Because, so this is more about process, and I think yes, that please. process is yeah, process is really important with working from home. Because one of the other things I realized was, um, so productivity having like this wasn't when productivity slipped, but I, had, I there were times where I would be doing proposals or pitches for new business and things like that. Mm-hmm. And when I did this at um, in the office when I worked in an agency. I was very, I was very quick at putting something out together. I always knew what I wanted to, the story I wanted to tell to the clients, the information I wanted to show, all of that. When I suddenly started doing it at home, I would be staring at a blank PowerPoint, and I'd be like, "I swear, I'm really good at this. Why, why, yeah. why am I struggling with it?" <laughs> <laughs> so, and 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 that's because when you're working from home, if you're not sitting at your desk, you're not working, or yeah. if you're not typing, you're not working. If you're not sending an email, you're not, that's not how it. No. That's not how working from home works at all, right? How it works is, um, so I will tell you how I discovered my process. So I basically got frustrated looking at that blank PowerPoint. I went and turned on the PlayStation during the working day, started playing FIFA for about an hour <laughs> and a half. My wife, my wife comes in and she's like, "What the hell are you doing?" <laughs> I, and we've got a mortgage to pay. <laughs> and I'm like, and I said to 
what are you talking about? And then she's like, how can you be playing PlayStation when we built like you're building this business and you know, like you're saying how important it is. And you told me just last night how you've got a proposal <laughs> to get done by the end of today. Right. And, um, and I was like, look, basically I was like, just leave me alone. I'm thinking. And, uh, and that's actually when I discovered my process because, so when you go to, when you go to uh, work, you always have to get on the train. I, I had a one hour for me on a train. There's a set way of doing it, isn't there? Yeah. So, so what would happen is, is that I've already started planning. I've already done the audits and the downloads and I already know what information I need. Right. So on the train, I've already started planning what my slides are going to look like. Right. So by the time I've then gone through that process for that one hour on the train, I then got to work and said, I need to knock out this proposal mm -hmm. um, and I need to get this proposal done so that it's ready for today or tomorrow or this week or whatever. Um, I'm very quick at it because I've already visualized what it's going to look like yeah. in my head. Yeah. And so that time when I sat there and I played FIFA, I had basically gone through that process. I went and sat down at my desk and within two hours that proposal was done, right? Because... I hadn't done that process. Process, bit, yeah. The thinking bit, yeah. yeah. And, you know, because I was sitting at my desk staring at the slide thinking, what shall I do? Rather than not being anywhere near my desk and processing everything that I need to do and visualizing it in my head and recreate and creating it in my head before I go recreate it physically. Yeah. Um, so that, that, my, and, yeah, my wife was like, my wife realized that, wow, that is a process. Like, yeah. I get it. Like, what you did there was fairly impressive. Yeah. And that's how I discovered what my process was. So suddenly now, how if I have a proposal or something like that, I do, I might turn on the PlayStation. I might go to the gym, and I well, we can't go to the gym right now. <laughs> but, um, yeah, they're closed, right? So, you know, but I would go to the gym, and basically I'll go for a run. So on the day I've got a proposal, I'll pick specific things like a run because that's mm -hmm. long. You can only think during a run because you're on a treadmill and of course. there's nothing to yeah. Yeah, nothing, Just don't don't hit the Netflix buttons or anything like that, <laughs> right? Um, so I'll go for a run, then I'll go in the swimming pool, and then I'll go in the jacuzzi. And in that time, I will have processed what I'm supposed to be doing when I get back at my desk. So then, you know, 10.30, I go to the gym. I'll be back at 11.30 and bang. It's a couple, proposal will yeah. be done over the next few days, right? It's a couple so. of things there, isn't there? It's, it's the first thing is, um, you know, your, your, your mind, when you're, when you're at work and you have to have that commute, your mind is almost like, gets used to a rhythm, doesn't it, of going through the, pro, you know, the process of that gap of going through work to work, which in, your mind is working and thinking about what you've got to do when you get there. But when you're at home, you don't have that sort of... Um, that commute, so to speak. So that that journey is you on your on your PlayStation playing FIFA, isn't it? And yeah, yeah, exactly. You know? And you know, as, as as I started to as I started to dissect that even more, what I realised was that there were times where I would go sit in the canteen at work, and I would just sit there with a coffee and maybe a piece of toast, or you know, in the morning, or like I'd be sitting there at lunchtime after lunchtime for a little bit longer. And what I was doing at those times was processing how. Um, processing how these things work. I need to blow my nose. No, go um, for it. Why are you doing that? I'll just say as well. Um, I was going to say, right now, the worst thing to do is cough or blow, blow your yeah. nose or something. But at least we're, we've got our distance at least. You know, we've got a two meter yeah, distance we're, between we're us. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, I was going to say, I was going to say the other Coffee. thing. Yeah. You go ahead, go ahead. No, 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 go on. I was going to say, um, it, it, the other thing is, you talked about sitting at your computer. That's the first thing you talked about, where you're just sitting at a blank, a blank screen. And it can become frustrating, can't it? I, I don't know about you, but if you, if you sit at a, a computer and nothing is sort of coming to you, you become, I become more and more frustrated, or become more and more frustrated. So I have to then take myself away physically, usually away from that situation. And it might mean I go out and, I don't know, I sit on, go and sit outside with a, a pen and paper, or I might just, I don't know, go for a run around the block or a walk, or just do something that completely takes me away from the scenario of sitting down. And that's when my thoughts start to gather themselves and I yeah. start to think, you know? Yeah, it's, it's so important. And everybody that's working from home and stuck at home right now, they'll be going through some of these stages so what you know the biggest thing you can do is identify 
when you do your thinking and how you do your thinking. Yeah, I love that. Especially when sitting at a desk. I love that. And, you know, for you, that might become something like hitting a tennis ball against a wall for an hour. Yeah. Yeah, whatever it is, right, it's still working. It's not, that doesn't mean you're suddenly not working. As long as you're still focused on what your task at hand is and you're basically trying to figure out how you're going to do it, you're still working. So, you know... That is very important for people to understand. Because I like that. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I saw this video where um, somebody's using a fan or something to move their mouse around at home so it <laughs> looks like they're working. And I'm like, that's not how it should be. Companies shouldn't be sitting there monitoring, are people still logged in? Are people still logged in? That's not how working from home works. And right? people work what, differently, don't they? Yeah, exactly. Everybody works in different ways. Um and I think that everyone has to self-reflect to find what that process is. When do you do your thinking? When do your best ideas come to you? Um, you know, what do you actually do at your desk when you're sitting there? And why are you, you know, the times you're most productive, why are you that productive at your desk? Um, and, you know, again, if we can tie this all back to mindset, because if you yeah. accept all of these things, suddenly you're already in a better mindset and a frame of mind because you know how you operate in a different condition no i love uh, that to going into an office yeah delivering deliberative in, in, on the other, on the the flip side of that if you're feeling at your lowest point you you, you probably need to assess yourself and, and look at yourself and think to yourself why am i feeling like this right now what what's causing me yeah. to feel this way and then when you when you're more aware of the things that help you to do your best work or you're aware of the things that are causing you to be in a, in a slump, then you can actually begin to, to think about remedying them, right? Yeah. And, you know, there's already signs of it because, so I think I, I mentioned that I've partnered with um, a gentleman named Nick yes. on his business help, help for addiction. And we did an equity deal where I would basically take equity of the website. Um, and, you know, we've been working together for over a year now. And, you know, due to all the current circumstances, we're, we're, we're literally launching online therapy next week because we've had an influx of demand for online therapy. And everything seems to be related to more mental health mm-hmm. with the idea that you've got this virus out there and that virus scares people. It, mm-hmm. It's frightening, right? Yeah. And then, like, p- people are working from home now. So they're not only dealing with the pressure of I need to learn what my process is of working from home, how I operate from home, um, the boredom of not being able to leave your house. Um, Then they've got this virus out there as well that they're scared, they're frightened of. They're scared that something's going to happen to them or their family member or their friends, right? Um, So there is, you know, that's going on in the back of their mind as well. So, you know, that's why, like, this whole online therapy, what we're doing with that is the reason we're launching online is simply so we can deliver it via Zoom so people can have that while they're at home. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, But the the only reason we've done this is because we've already had inquiries about, um, about, you know, having therapy from home. Can you give us therapy from home? Mm -hmm. And we... You know, we've got a therapist, so we're like, let's just deliver it online because, you know, I, I think that as this develops and depending on how long we're in lockdown, there's going to be a lot of people are going to start struggling with working from home. So, you know, I hope that they listen to this conversation because, you know, you've said some really useful stuff um, about, um, you know, about the process, about like um, you, how you found your way, how yeah. I found my way. And I think that's everybody has to find their way. Uh, at this time and mm-hmm. find something that works positive for them. I come from the school of positivity and I'll tell you something, when I set up on my own, that all went out the window. I thought I was immune to feeling negative about no, anything. No, it is, yeah. But yeah. yeah, it's easy to be positive when everything's going right. Absolutely. Right? It's, it's not so easy when everything's going wrong. It's still easy when it's a little bit's gone wrong, but when everything, suddenly all the pressure is on you and you have to deliver positivity is you're not sitting there thinking i'm just let me just be positive about this right now it's one Um, thing you need to have that positive mindset yeah yeah, it's one thing being a manager manager or a a founder or an owner of a business that's you know that's co-located there's pressures to you know that are brought to bear on somebody who who is that person because they often talk about being uh you know wondering who they should talk to but when it comes to being that person that founder or that manager and then working remotely, I think it's it's even more 
the, the pressures are even even greater because even you don't greater. have that contact. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, Alex. Because, to, um, Alex, you know, you, you like um, if you're a manager right now, you're probably uh, thinking uh, not just about yourself. You're probably thinking how if you're a good manager, you'll be thinking how am I going to manage my team? And absolutely, sure yeah. They are, yeah. They are mentally okay as well. And how? I mean, um, actually, on that point, how can you recognise sort of symptoms in your own team as well? I mean. As much as it's, it's probably, I don't know if it's easier. I, I mean, not to say that I found it easy to look for the symptoms in myself, but it can sometimes be more difficult to look for symptoms in people you're managing because people, I don't know, unless you've got a really, really close relationship with somebody and you know them inside out, it's sometimes people might mask them or I don't know. What, what, yeah, what can you do? Yeah. Well, that's a really, I think that's a really good question. Um, there's, do you know what? There's a lot. Of, there's, there's actually quite a lot you can do as a manager. Um, first, when you first sit down and think about it, get yourself right. Make sure that you're comfortable and you've found your process at home and how you're going to basically continue to be productive and how you're going basic, how you're going to make sure you have the right mindset every morning and stuff like that. So once you've looked after yourself, now you help your team, right? Um, but you've got to be quick with it if you're a manager because you can't take weeks to. Uh, find your own process and stuff. You've got to be pretty quick. So in the meantime, what you should be doing is implementing something that creates a little bit of normality to what your staff has in the office. Now, what what do staff love most in the office? Well, they will enjoy the fact that they get to have banter with their colleagues. Mm -hmm. They will, and I'm taking the work bit out of it, like whether you enjoy your work or not has got nothing to do with this right now, right? You need to basically, as a manager, you should be focused. If you want the best out of them at this time, you should be focusing on their mindset and how, what you create that keeps them in a strong frame of mind right now. So the biggest thing that we all have right now is we can all relate to the fact that we're all locked in our houses. So as a manager, if you didn't have anything, um, if you didn't have anything that you know that you could relate to with your staff before, you've certainly got something now because you're going to be having the same challenges as your staff is. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and what I would suggest is, if you like, you're not always going to recognise when somebody is feeling down because they might pretend. But what you will notice is that if they're more frustrated on web conference meetings or on the phone, um, you you you'll be able to sense frustration. Uh, for sure, because somebody who normally contributes a lot will suddenly contribute less. Somebody who um, somebody who doesn't contribute as much anyway, but will suddenly become very quiet or very distant. Or when you've asked them something, they might not necessarily be as focused on their work. You know, you want you, it's good to ask. It's good to ask your staff details at this time because mm -hmm. if they're not in the detail. Um, when they normally are, then you, you'll be able, that's another, it's another tell, right? But I think that rather than trying to identify, okay, which one of my, um, which one of my team has got anxiety, which one hasn't, I think that what you're going to be more better off doing is as a manager, ring them up, ring up everybody, um, ring up whoever your team members are. I mean, even if you've got a team of, like, when I had a team of 70 people, I still had five direct reports, right? And then it kind of, like, filters down. Filter down, So yeah. at least ring up, yeah, ring up your direct reports and maybe ring up a couple of people underneath them too. Um, and just, you know, have a conversation with the house things. They get, you know, like, uh, you talk to them about some, maybe your, some of your frustrations. Let them talk about some of their frustrations because letting it out is going to help as well. Yeah. Um, we've got things like Zoom as well where you can ha have a whole group meeting. Mm -hmm. So you should be setting one of those, you know, every every two or three days, I think, at this moment in time, just not necessarily to do work, right, but just so all the staff are still talking to each other. So you might talk a bit about work, but then talk a bit about everything else going on. Don't just let it all go back to work. Yeah. Because um, if you're just going to talk to your um, staff about work at this worrying time, then they are not going to be mentally um, mentally prepared or mentally safe because what you need is you need to be creating some normality about what they have in their workplace. Yeah. Um, but, you know, that fact that if you've got a Zoom and everybody's on it and everybody's having a laugh about something, then that's great. The other thing is you could even do evening drinks, right? You could say that, oh, let's all have a team drink together. 
um, this evening. It's Friday or it's Thursday. Remotely. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll have, yeah, let's do remote drinks. Yeah, right? yeah. Why not? Why exactly, not? Um, yeah. The other thing, there's a great app. It's called um, House Party. Have you heard of it? No, I haven't. I'm going to write that one down. House Party, yeah? Ha- yeah, House Party, yeah. So, so what you can do in House Party... You could set up, you, you and your team could set up on house party and like, let's say you decide to FaceTime one of your team members. Mm-hmm. So you might be having a conversation with that team member, but somebody else from your team can then jump, intrude and jump in on that call. Okay. That's if you don't lock. So if you leave the room open, so somebody else from, that t- from your team or your friends list can jump in on that call and suddenly just randomly join the conversation. Um, Plan spontaneity. Yeah, it's like it's banter, isn't it? Like in the office yeah. as well. It'd just be a good laugh to do something like that. Um, you have to be delivering. I just think you need to be right now at this moment in time. You should be delivering more mindset stuff than how far are you with your work? Can you hit the deadlines and that sort of thing? Yeah. Um, as long as you've got a team that hits deadlines, then you should be focusing on on the people and what their state of mind is and how the communication is flowing more than anything else. Yeah, I, I agree. And I think in this, because I mean, I've spoken to people who, who have been in the world of remote work, who've worked remotely for 10, 20 years, and some, some of them, it took them six months, a year, two years to get to grips with working from home. Let, let, and forget about the, the, the day-to-day th- work that they have to do. It just, it just took them like that length of time to just bed in. So I agree with you. I think it's so important to talk about things other than work, but it's also important to have that empathy and have that patience with your team so that you you can give them as, you know, as much time as possible to actually acclimatize to this new this new sort of uh, yeah. you know way of life that we're having at the moment. You know, you have to get get them ready for it, prepare them for yeah, it. Yeah, I I completely agree. Because Businesses are, you know, businesses are worried as well right now because obviously profits are down, sales are down. Um, so, you know, for for somebody that's, you know, leading that business, it's it's difficult because they need to worry about the patience of their employee and then they need to worry about their bottom line. But I think that if you can focus more on the people. So that that bottom line improves, and that then that might be one way to go about it. Or you do need to split your time by saying, okay, well, clearly we're going to need more clients. Clearly we're going to need more sales. So you put things in place for that, and then you say, how am I going to carry on making my people deliver as well as they they've always delivered? And you have to put something in place for that. You can't if you if you as a business owner, if you now suddenly just focus on the sales a bit because that's where the emergency is then this this side, the people think, is going to dip, mm-hmm. without a doubt. It's, you know, you're going to have to be that leader that you, you you thought you was or you are when you started this business, and you're going to start juggling things, you know, again, and make sure your focus is split in two places. Yeah, it's, um, a, diff- it's a different kind of leadership, isn't it? It's, it's really, more, yeah. It's more I of really a, feel yeah. for business owners right now, really feel for them. I do. Um, I do too. It's It's... it's and it's difficult. I think those business owners also, or business owners, managers, founders, they also need to have that support network themselves because they're ta- what you have to realize is you're taking on being that, I suppose, coach. I suppose you could say you could, they're almost being, becoming coaches um, and being more sort of that, all that empathy. It's going to have, it's going to probably take its, take a sort of toll on, on, on you as well because you're having to, like you said, you're going to have, you're going to have to, acclimatized to working remotely and getting your team all in place and dealing with all the daily pressures that you know it takes to actually run a team or run a business yeah. but who who is looking after you so you have to f- figure out who that person would be or or bring p- people into your network your support network to look after you as well so that you're in the best possible position to look after your team you know? yeah I agree and i think you know you just stumbled on something really important like who's looking after you um and, and so, like, I think that you should still be trying, just like we talked about remote drinks with your work colleagues and stuff like that, I think you still should be doing some remote stuff with your friends. Um, so I've actually got something planned, you know, today. Um, is I'm going to be playing a poker game on PokerStars. And, you know, it's not for a lot of money. It's a very small amount of money. 
Uh, but I'm playing in a private room with friends. Mm-hmm. And simultaneously, we're all going to be talking on Zoom as well while we play. And, you know, that, that's something I've got planned tonight because, you know, I can't go in, I can't go in one <laughs> of the houses and play a poker game, can I? Yeah, like, yeah. You just can't. So we said, well, we're all stuck in the house. Should we have a game of poker like we would normally like once every couple of months? But we'll do it from home and we'll do it on PokerStars because you can have a private room and we'll, we'll come and Zoom at the same time. Um, and this is you, this is all of that stuff is what helps your well being as well because yeah. you you got to see your friends and or your family and stuff like that and you know this is just how you have to function for a little while but you got to embrace all the technology that we've got yeah. because all, we've created all this technology that allows us to be remote and aren't we lucky we created it yeah exactly and why we should be using it because. We we built a world where you can stay at home. Literally, right? yeah. Yeah. No, I agree, and I, I. It's about also thinking outside of the outside of the box. Uh, I suppose I would. I'd never have thought of actually. I mean, I, I don't. I don't know much about um, uh, poker or well, gaming is not something I do that much. But I know that, for example, places like Twitch. If you are a gamer, Twitch is a, is a place where you can sort of hang out you can create quite no, private spaces can't you and, and game on there or i don't know just just like you said just having on for something like skype if you've got people in your network you can just gather together and just talk about what went on yeah, or, exactly. Yeah, yeah exactly and a lots of these apps now for example google now they've stepped up and they've in, they've improved um hangouts and they've got meet now haven't they and you can have i don't know 10 I think up to 20 people, 25 people on there at a time. Yeah. So it's, there's all kinds of different oh, okay. tech. So I didn't know that because yeah. I use Google Hangouts quite a bit, but I've always used it just for like, um, you know, a fa- like almost like a FaceTime or something. Yeah. Uh, when I'm only having a meeting one, because I didn't know that actually they're doing a similar thing. That's quite good. Yeah. 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 But I think that interaction, we, we're human beings after all. We need interaction. We need to separate work uh, from, like you suggested, uh, Dipesh, we need to separate our work from our, you know, our, our downtime, we need to have that downtime. We have to have that, that sort of baked in to, yeah. the, to the, you know, the daily, daily life or at least once or twice a week, you know, especially now. So, yeah, yeah, definitely now. Yeah. Um, so but, yeah, Rowan? I was going to say, what, what, are, what are the plans for you now? What are the plans for you and Gravitas Q and, so, you know, as I said, I feel sorry for business owners uh, because, to be honest, right now is a difficult time for Gravitas Q as well. Um, you know, we've had a couple of clients turn off their PPC ads. So that's going to impact. That's, that is, as a business, that's going to impact me because um, if they're not advertising, then obviously I've, I, I've got less to do. Um, I'm very lucky in the fact that SEO clients, they, 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 they continue to do what they do. Um, and they, they should because with SEO, it's, you know, you can't just suddenly stop because we're on lockdown for a little while. SEO is something you've got to keep doing anyway. I think with PPC and social media, because it's real time, there are bits, uh, there are pockets where um, a couple of clients have turned mm-hmm. off because it doesn't make sense for them to be live. Like if you're, you know, if you're in a venue and you're doing PPC ads, exactly, but yeah. your venue's closed. There's no point. In, <laughs> there's no yeah. point in running ads. To yeah. Send people to ask them to come to your shop or anything like that, right? So you know it's going to be a tough time. I mean, I'm confident that people will get through it, but it's going to be a tough time. And um, going forward, I mean, like um, you know, we've, it's 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 almost business as usual. Otherwise, so I'm lucky in the fact that you know I've got a um, a good uh, client book in the sense that I've got a variation of clients. So they're not all people see where everybody has to turn off or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm very lucky in that sense. So it's business as usual. And we've got to ask you, it's just the plan is to continue growing it. Um, and kind of like one of the biggest things that Gravitas Q needs is exposure and the fact that um, we're bringing people with five to 10 years um, to the table, um, with five to 10 years experience to the table uh, to, to, you know, and what they can do and how good they are is very, very important. And to how a business can grow, whether you're large or small, um, you might have, you might be a very big uh, brand and you've just never managed to get your performance right. Well, what if I told you we, we can give you people that have been around and have worked on a lot of brands and managed to get the best out of some big brands? Absolutely, as well. yeah. Um, yeah, so you know that is that is the message we're putting out there because 
I think that a lot of brands are now kind of becoming a little bit hesitant with agencies and things like that. And this is the whole reason the consultancy was started up. And even if you want somebody to review what, um, as a big, you know, if you want somebody to review whether you're doing the right stuff, then that's another reason to give us a call as well. Yeah. But yeah, for us, as business as usual. Uh, as I said on Helpful Addiction, we're going live on um, online therapy this week. So that's going to be big because there's a lot of people out there who are not going to be able to get to rehab um to deal with their alcohol addictions or drug addictions there are people that might be having anxiety and depression issues mm -hmm. um so the fact that they'll be able to get therapy at home um from their phone or tablet or computer is going to be really big and that's delivered by a registered registered therapist um from our clinic anyway so you know so you're still busy then you still keep busy. busy yeah still busy still busy <laughs> Um, it's a bit like the hard bit is not being able to go out. So I haven't been able to go to the gym. And today I was feeling a little, this morning I was feeling a little sore. Um, like my muscles aren't, you know. They're not active. active. Yeah. 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 They're not active. So today I'm going to go for a run probably about four or five o'clock as well because I just need, to, I need to, I, I'm going to have to go out and yeah. at least have a run in the fresh air. Well, at least we're allowed to do we're that. Allowed, we're allowed to do that. <laughs> yeah, we're allowed to exercise once a day. So, and I haven't, I never, I haven't been taking the opportunity to do that either. <laughs> yeah. It's, so, um, Again, that's another, I mean, that could be a whole other um, podcast, couldn't it, on how to sort of keep physically, physically in yeah. shape, because that, that's, I actually did a podcast about that, in terms of the, because lots of people, we, we talk about the, the mindset and the mental, the mental aspect of working from home, rightly so, because it affects a lot of people, but sometimes that's at the, we don't, we neglect the physical consequences of working from home as well, because obviously, Absolutely, yeah. you have to have that discipline, don't you, you have to be able to discipline yourself to get up and just get up and walk up and down the stairs or go to the gym or go around the block. So that's a whole different story, which we'll cover at another time, I guess. <laughs> yeah, mate, that, there's definitely a podcast in that because when I, when I first uh, set up on my own, I, I was thinking, you know what, this is brilliant. I want to go to the gym every day. And, um, it did not last. Time. I, mean, I was getting bored when I was in the workplace. Right. So I was like, something's not right here. Yeah. I thought that, you know, I thought this would be easier. And, and, yeah, and, and your fatigue does suffer a little bit. Yeah. If you're not exercising, then you know what happens? You, your productivity um, changes. I started intermittent fasting as well, where I don't okay. do anything till one o'clock as well. Um, and I find that really good because uh, in the morning, I'm not like rushing around to... Um, to have, I'm, I'm not I'm not rushing around, but I'm not worried about what I'm having for breakfast. All I'm going to do is I'm going to come in the kitchen get a coffee and get on my desk and it just made me a whole lot more productive as well. So yeah, yeah, yeah. you probably have got a podcast on that. Yeah. yeah, there's definitely a podcast, <laughs> but this one has been really eye opening for me. And it's like I said, it's been good to have some face time with you having written to you all these, these years. And, um, I just want to wish you all the best with Gravitas Q. I'll be keeping obviously up to date with that. What I want to do as well is, um, is make sure that we we get uh, help for addiction in the show notes so people can actually link to it from the show notes and uh, you know if 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 any of this has chimed with you today if you're if experiencing I don't know slumps in your mood you know if you if you're feeling not yourself if you're feeling if, if somebody you know is is not feeling themselves then don't keep it to yourself whatever you do at, at the very least talk to somebody but um, it may be that uh, help for addiction could be yeah. something that could help you out. Definitely reach out because on the website, you can even have, there's instant web chat, um, there's a consultation form. So you don't necessarily have to come and, you know, buy online therapy before somebody is willing to have a conversation with you. If you just put a little message in the web chat and, um, you know, Nick or one of his colleagues will um, have a conversation with you. Uh, less likely to be me as I'm probably not the best, most, I'm not the best suited to it, but, you know, people that have got experience in therapy, people that have experience of addiction, you know, you can have a conversation with them on web chat on helpforaddiction.co.uk. So, yeah, definitely, if you are struggling with remote working, then, yeah, definitely come do it. But I hope, like, you know, the conversation today that we've had, you know, that will help people, um, that will help people anyway. So no, I'm sure it will. Definitely. I'm sure it will. And we'll be keeping up Alex, to date. Thank you. Thank you for having me on as well. Pleasure. It was my pleasure. 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 And uh, we will speak to you soon. And thank you everybody for listening. And we'll 
catch you with a, with another episode very soon. So all, all of you, take care, and we'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye.